Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing well. For today's video, I wanted to do a review of my Canon R50. My Canon R50 unboxing is currently my most viewed video on my channel. So I wanted to do a full review of the camera, what I liked, what I disliked, and just my time using it. So let's just get into my setup. I bought this camera around a month ago. I decided to buy the body on its own because there wasn't a bundle with the lens that I wanted. It only had a bundle with the 18 to 45 millimeter lens. And personally, that's just not wide enough for me. So the body itself was $679.99. I am looking and it's on sale for $5.79 so if you're looking to get this camera I would get it right now on Amazon. I also have it linked in my store for if you guys want to buy it. It is an affiliate link so I will make some commission but if you're looking for a camera why not use my link? So I did just buy the body and then I bought the lens separately the RFS 10 to 18 millimeter lens and the lens is $329. If they had a bundle I would have bought that but they did not so I just decided to buy it on its own. In addition I'm using the Manfrotto mini tripod which was around $20 and the Rode Video Micro the first version not the second one. I think it was like $40. So in total, my whole setup was around $1,070, which is kind of crazy to say out loud, but I did decide to do the Amazon monthly payments. So I'm paying like $155 every month. I do think that if you have the money, just buy the camera as a whole, but I like the monthly payment aspect just so I didn't see my bank account drain that much. Okay, now I want to talk about my personal experience and why I decided to buy this camera in the first place. I was mainly looking for a portable, lightweight vlogging camera that I could take with me anywhere, but also film sit down videos like this with. So I looked at some Sony cameras cameras, the ZV-1, the ZV-E10. I even bought them and tried them out, but ultimately I didn't like their menu system, so I decided to go back to Canon. Okay, some of the quick specs of the camera that I feel like really didn't make or break my decision because a lot of cameras these days are really high quality. It has a 24.2 megapixel sensor. It shoots 4K, which was really nice. It has the three inch flip out touchscreen, the electronic viewfinder, which is really nice. There's a mic input, USB-C port. It also does have the Wi-Fi capability if that's something you want, but I just use the SD card. It's also really great for beginners. There's very minimal buttons that you have to like understand I feel like someone that's new to cameras can really pick up on the buttons and the menu system really nicely. I'm pretty sure I already mentioned this, but it is an RFS mirrorless camera, so there's not a ton of lens options. That's just something to keep in mind. I think there's only four options as of right now, but I would definitely go with this or the 50 millimeter. So the main reason why I purchased the camera was for the flip out screen, the mic input, the wide angle lens, and I like the flash feature also. So that's just something that I wanted personally. I feel like I couldn't really justify the ZV-E10 because it didn't have that built-in flash or even a viewfinder. If you can't tell already, I'm already recording on the R50, so this is the footage that you're getting. I am shooting in manual mode, but you can definitely just play around and make the video your own, but this is just how I'm shooting. Next, I want to talk about some things that I don't really love about the camera. First off is its size and weight. I feel like its size can be a pro and a con, but for me, I really wanted something smaller. Like, I was looking at the G7Xs, but they really didn't fit what I wanted in terms of not being wide angle their autofocus wasn't that good side note the autofocus on this camera is really good because it has the dual pixel autofocus but back to the sizing i think the size is good because it's a mirrorless camera like it's not super big but with that being said it's not like a vlogging camera it's still like just a mini dslr so i don't know if that's a big issue i've also seen in some reviews that a lot of people with bigger hands can't really fit with the camera's grip because it's so small so that's just something to look out for the camera fits really nicely in my hand which is good the camera also has built-in stabilization but it adds a crop to your video so it's okay with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens but I feel like if you get the 18 millimeter it's gonna be really close and I don't think that's what most people want so while that feature doesn't really affect me a ton I feel like it would affect people that can't afford the 10 to 18 millimeter honestly those are the only main things I dislike about the camera overall it's really great and I love using it side note if you do buy the 10 to 18 millimeter you're gonna have to get the firmware update but for whatever reason I can't figure out how to do it so every time I turn the camera on there's a little notification that's like this lens isn't compatible it is compatible though I think just because it's a new camera the lens and the body don't really add up I don't know I went to the Canon website and I searched for all the updates for the camera but it didn't say anything about the 10 to 18 millimeter firmware so I'm like confused about that maybe it's because I have a Mac maybe it's because I don't know how to do it if anyone can help me let me know in the comments but now I'm gonna switch to my phone camera and I'm gonna give you guys an overview of the body okay guys so I've never done a voiceover before so hopefully this sounds okay I'm just showing you my whole setup the tripod camera and microphone this is the back of it and just kind of how it fits in my hands now I'm just going to show you guys each individual part. So this is the Manfrotto Tripod Mini. Um, it's very sturdy. The legs spread apart like this. It's very good material. The bottom also has some grips on it. It doesn't extend outward though. It's just the legs. You just push in that red button and then it will swivel around. Next is the Rode Video Micro Mini 2. It's very small, very light. 
smaller than my hand. I put tape around it so it wouldn't um, wiggle as much because it's very light. This is the coil and then it's super easy to plug in. There's just a mic input on the side of the camera and you plug it in and then slide it on the hot shoe mount. And then screw it in to tighten it up. And then this is what it looks like on top of the camera. A little crazy, but all mics look like that. So, okay, guys, here's the Canon R50 with the 10 to 18 millimeter lens. This is the size of it in my hands. I have pretty small hands also, but you can look up the dimensions on Google also. The hand grip is really nice. I know some people have bigger hands, so it doesn't fit as well, but it fits really nicely for my hands. This is just a quick overview of the top, back, side, and bottom. This is what the lens looks like. It's very small. It's like a close to a pancake lens, I'd say. And when you unlock it to turn it on and activate it, it doesn't come out that far either compared to um, some other ones. Also on the front is the button to take off the lens and interchange it if you'd like to put on a different one. There's the sensor. And then you just line up the red dots and turn to put it back in. Again, there's the grip and the Canon logo. The flash is also up there. It's just a pop-up flash and you manually pop it up. And then on the bottom, there's the tripod mount and then the battery and SD card slot compartment. The battery is just a classic R-series battery. I definitely need to get some more of these. They're not the best batteries. And then this is my little sand disc. Closing that up and going to the side is the mic input again. And the other side has the USB-C and I believe micro HDMI. And then also on the sides are the hooks for the strap. The top has the hot shoe mount again. Um, here is the overview of how long it is. The pop-up flash once again. And then all the dials, record button, shutter button, and all that. On the back is the flip-out screen. I love this screen. I love the texture on it also, if you guys can see. I like that they added that. Here are some more buttons. And then there's a little thumb grip also up there. Here's the viewfinder. It doesn't pull out or anything, it's just fixed and you can see through it when the camera's on. So this is just what it looks like again. When you turn it on, there's this little notification if you do decide to get the 10 18 millimeter lens. It says it doesn't work because it needs a firmware update. However, I have no idea how to do that and it's kind of annoying to hit OK every time you turn it on. There's also a little notification if you're shooting in 4K, it just lets you know that it's um, going to be bigger size when you go to deal with it. Um, that was just a little shot of the viewfinder. This is what the menu system and stuff looks like if you want to play back a video. And then here is the menu. Super easy. I love Canon's menu system. It's very easy to find what you're looking for. And I just love how simple it is. So here's me just going through all the settings. I love that it's touch screen also makes for super easy changing the settings like exposure. And that's just kind of the overview of it in my hands. And I really love this camera. I want to talk a little bit about photography. While this is mainly a video camera, it still can take amazing pictures. While the 10 to millimeter lens is mostly for vlogging, it can still take really good photos if you just use it in a different way. I haven't really done like a full photography in-depth session. I like shooting on manual again. I keep the light usually on auto white balance or natural. And also for the viewfinder, I turn my grid on so it just helps keep things straight. I'm trying to get more into photography, but it's really been like winter and no one really wants to take pictures. So I haven't really played around with the settings too much but again I'll insert some photos. I also really like the flash on this camera if you like that digital camera flash effect I like the flash for this. It's really simple to use you just pop the flash up take the picture and it comes out looking amazing every time. Again I'm not super into the photography aspect I'm trying to get there but we'll see. But I just wanted to give you guys a full review of how I've been liking the camera what I've been using it for. All of the videos I've shot since my unboxing video were filmed on this camera so if you need more test footage you can look at all of those and it's all shot on this camera. With that being said I think that's all for this video. If you guys have any questions about the camera and my personal experience you can comment them down below and yeah thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you in my next video bye bye